This video is going to provide you with an overview of some of the basic skills you need to create graphics for television or video in Illustrator. We'll start by creating a new document in Illustrator. We're doing this for film and video. So we can use one of the templates that Illustrator provides. If we go to film and video, we just have to pick the appropriate resolution. We could make it larger if necessary, but since we know exactly the size we're designing this for, we can just pick HDV, HDTV, 1080. And those dimensions are 1920 pixels by 1080. So this is the standard size we're using. Click on Create, and it is going to give you a basic screen. This looks very disorganized, so I'm just going to go under Workspace, Reset Essentials Classic, so I got something that's a little bit more streamlined. I resized the canvas to fit within the available screen, and I'm going to begin my work by creating some guides. By creating title safe guides, you'll have a general idea where your graphics are going to go. And I think it's helpful as a tool to visualize how things are going to look on the screen later on. As another aid, you could also add a background graphic here just to give yourself an idea of how things are going to look with a, a video under it. But that's not essential. And the goal here, again, is to create a graphic with a transparent background that you can put on top of a video. Generally, the graphic uh, creates a simple background for you to put text on top, and it's designed to provide you with extra information about what's going on in screen. So it could be a locator, which is usually in the upper right-hand corner. It could be a lower third graphic, which is usually in the lower left-hand corner. And a lower third could have uh, the name of the person on screen, it could have the name and location, or it could have the name and profession. So there are a whole range of things it can cover. We can also have more complicated graphics. Uh, for this, we're just going to go over the, the really basic, simple ones. And again, it's a good idea to always remember that the goal is to have the graphic against a transparent background so that when you bring it into a video editor or other program, you can use it so that the background video is going to show through and the graphic is going to be on top. So this white canvas we're working on, that isn't going to be there in the exported graphic. So I'm going to start by setting up the guides. Uh, you can go under View, whoops, go under View, Rulers, Show Rulers to bring the rulers up. The key command is Command R. And Command R is the key command in almost every Adobe program. So it's a, a good one to, to remember. I want to create guides that will bring my text in just a little bit from all the boundaries. Um, you can use, uh, you know, more exacting measure. I think HD video is a lot more forgiving than standard definition video used to be. With standard definition, you always had to take into account that the TV screen would crop into it a little bit and get rid of some of the information. Designing for high definition video, that's not so much of an issue. I'm going to use a basic 100 pixel guide for the top and sides, and I am going to use 200 pixels for the bottom. The bottom is really the key area here in terms of providing distance. So here, I'm just going to go, it's about 1920. You could zoom in a little bit more. I'm probably not being totally precise on this side. So here, I'll zoom in a little bit more and I'll get, oh, actually, I was pretty precise. So I guess I eyeballed it very well. And then for the bottom, I need, to, uh, I think I'll zoom in again for that. And then just use the space bar to temporarily bring up the hand tool. And then I can just drag this down. So I want this to be roughly 200 pixels. So that would mean 880. Oh, no, that's really, that really seems big. But I think that's just because I'm zoomed in so much. 
so 880. And again, you can use the arrow keys to position it. Sometimes that ease, that's a little bit easier. That does seem a little bit big, so maybe I'll just drag that down a little bit more. That seems like it's an adequate height. It's still a little bit more than the top. And it will give us a guide in terms of going in and placing the graphic. I'm just going to rename this Guides. And I'm going to lock it. Guides can be moved at any point in time with the Move tool when it's active. So by putting them on a layer by themselves and then locking it, it means that uh, they're never going to get in the way. I'm going to do another layer. And this is going to be my graphic. So all the artwork is going to go on this layer. I'm just going to do a very simple lower third, but they can be extremely complicated. So here I'm going to start by maybe picking a color. I'm just going to pick something really basic. I'm not going to do an outline. And I'm going to pick the square tool. And I'm just going to drag and draw. You can make this as long as you want. You can shorten it later on. Um, it should cover more than half, usually as a general rule. And that way you'll have a basic graphic that will accommodate lar longer names. You could also make shorter versions of it so that you, you don't have excess graphic when you, if you have a super short name. And that would be what you would do if you were designing a graphics package for network. I have the basic graphic. If I want to make any changes to the shape, I can. Uh, for example, if I wanted to make a, a little point here at the end, all of the TSN ones had that little kind of arrow point in there. Uh, you can just edit it the same way you would any, any shape. Just go in. The nice thing with Illustrator, you get these handy smart guides. And this tells me this is going to be able to put this extra point exactly in the middle. Then I can just use the shift and the arrow key to bring it out. The right arrow key um, is just moving the selected point one pixel at a time. When I combine it with the shift key, it moves it 10 pixels at, the, at a time. So that makes certain that I'm not moving it up or down. I'm just moving it straight to the right. So this is a, you know, a nice little kind of basic graphic. Um, I could just go in and add text on top. A dark color, black, dark gray, dark blue, anything within that realm is usually great for graphics. They just create something a little bit more, with a little bit more oomph that you can put a light colored text on top. If you were doing a light colored background graphic, then you would want to make sure your text was darker. For visibility, white on black is usually what's preferred. And remember, you're not putting oodles of paragraph text on here. You're just putting a, a small amount. The most difficult thing is if you pick a uh, like a medium toned color, that's very hard to choose a text color to put on top of, and I would try to avoid it. So we'll look at adding the, the text to the basic graphic now. Um, I'm just going to start by locking that and then going in and adding another layer. And this is going to be my text layer. And what I'm doing is I'm going to create my text layer. And this is just going to be placeholder text. And then I'm going to make changes to the graphic. But I will start by going in. I am going to switch to the type tool. I'm going to pick a font. I'm just going to use Arial. And remember, um, for text, for screen text, you usually want to pick a, a nice big fat font. So I'm going to use Arial Bold. And you usually want to pick a sans serif font. A sans serif font is always better for screen display. So here I need to change the point size. And what I generally do when I'm working for screen display is actually in preferences change the text measure from points to pixels. But you know what? It's a one-to-one -one relationship, so it doesn't really matter. For this kind of lower third text, I want something that is on the lower end. And for screen text in general, for HDTV, I think the smallest you want to go is around 36 pixels. So for title text, you'd be 
going even larger, but in this case, we're gonna use something that is closer to 36. Oh, well, actually, maybe we'll go 40. 40 is a nice number. And Arial is a nice, thick, fat font. So here, before I start, I'm just gonna go in and change the font color to white. So I'm just gonna enter the RGB color values to do that. And if you remember, 255, 255, 255 equals white. And that is true for additive color space. So I've got a nice bright white. And you'll see all the other corresponding ways of measuring that. So in hexadecimal, which is for the web, it comes through as six Fs. And in U saturation brightness, the brightness is set to 100%. And in CMYK, which is a print-only color space, it's everything is set to zero. So I am just going to click here. I'm going to click just a little to the side of the guideline, and I can then go in and place it. I actually want it to be centered here, and I'm probably eventually, this is, seems like a very short piece of text for this. Um, maybe just in terms of this, I could make it a little bit bigger. So I think I'm going to try 46. select it and I have to switch to the type tool for that and we'll make it just slightly bigger uh, the font size you're going to use should vary depending on the font so that's a good thing to remember I want it to be centered so I am going to unlock the graphic I'm going to click in this little circle to select both layers, and then I am going to use this option here to center. The only problem is I accident I didn't turn off the align to canvas. It should be set to align to selection. So if I undo that and go back in and do it again, just click here. It's set to align to selection now. So if I go in and center them both. Here, it's going to create something where the, the vertical center is aligned, not the horizontal center. And that's, that's good. That gives me my placeholder text. I can see what that color is going to look like here. And it just gives me something to work with if I want to go in and try a few different features with my, my graphics.